Hello, welcome to the Comic Book Club. I am your host, Jamil Payne. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Amanda Comey. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing fine. I, I feel awkward. Yeah, I think that's um I think that's the name of the game today. I think it is. I think it is. So today we are discussing sex criminals. But before we get into that. Amanda, we have to talk about something that, that, that affects me and you both. Yeah. Netflix announced that they're making a Sandman TV series. Amanda, how do you feel about this? Uh, curious. Um, I think that one of the, I think that one of the things we talked about while we were, you know, spending months going over the Sandman series <laughs> is that, it's like, it really is a story that's kind of uniquely made to be a comic book story. Right. And I feel like of all of the stories that are comic books, it's just so well suited to this medium. And uh, I just kind of wonder... I kind of wonder what other people thought of the comic book if they read it and then said, yeah, that would be a great movie. I'm like, did you really read it? <laughs> well, I think if it's a TV show better than a movie, I think if you're going to do this, I think TV, a TV show is, way to, is, is the way to go. Yeah. But with that being said, I'm not so for sure about this. <laughs> I'm also reminded of um, Lucifer, which... The Lucifer from the Sandman series was spun off into a really amazing solo book. Right. Uh, and then that was turned into a TV show, but like not really. <laughs> I mean, people seem to like it though. Like it it has um it has literally nothing to do with the comic book series. They I mean like he doesn't even the the power set and the premise isn't even the same thing mm. um like re, like having read sandman is enough for you to watch the tv series and go that's not the same lucifer so i'm kind of wondering if and i i definitely saw some people joking about this if they're not just going to have some sort of like like dream detective like procedural <laughs> where it's going to be like Morpheus is like a hard boiled cop and he's like got to solve crimes by going into people's dreams. And like, and like he'll have like a pet, you know, cat and like, he'll have like a, a, you know, crow or something that he like follows for clues and, you know, well, well here's the thing, man, they have him. Matthew in the new Swamp Thing series, I believe, which I haven't watched yet. Yeah. If you want to, mm -hmm. you you can get heavy with this shit, man. If they really wanted to, they they literally have all the elements on separate networks to make like a Sandman universe. You got Swamp Thing over here with Matthew. You got um dude playing um. Playing Constantine, who who's like really great on like on like various CW shows, and you got Lucifer over here, so you you can it's all there. It's just not together. Well, they they even have like like we know that it would be consistent with the Sandman universe for like Supergirl to have a dream sequence where Morpheus shows up, right? So or Wonder Woman. So it's not even, um, it's not, it doesn't even have to be like the CW TV series either. They could easily, you know, have cameos or small crossovers or references or East like Yeah, people love that shit. But um, <laughs> it's just what I really, what I really found so compelling about the original Sandman series was that the combination of the art and the text 
was more efficient than reading a novel, but still left enough room for like personal abstraction. Right. And when it's TV, like you could get uncanny Valley. It could be too specific. Like it could be giving you too much information because you're watching it. Like it would be too real. Hmm. Good point. Good point. Um, another time that I, I've really strongly defended that a, a certain comic book was better as a comic book than a TV or a movie was, um, uh, and I was, I was actually planning to bring this up later. Um, the first, I read the first issue of, uh, the wicked and the divine, uh -huh. which super popular, but, uh, music is important in that story. Right. And there's a lot of like, oh, it was like the most beautiful music they'd ever heard. Could you imagine if somebody had to actually go out and pick real music to be, quote, the most beautiful music in the world? Right. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And so, like, that's the same thing with Sandman. Like, like, how do you how do you pick elements that are supposed to be like symbolic of the most? I don't know. Um I just feel like I don't – when we're talking about dreams and we're telling stories about dreams, I want it to be suggestions and then I can fill in the rest. I don't want to be told too much. So I think it's a really fine line they may be walking trying to adapt something that's so abstract. I agree. But I also think there's – there's I mean, it could also be really cool. It could also be really cool. There's I'm open to that possibility. There's chunks of this uh, of that series that could be adapted, like like you know, because Sandman, a good chunk of Sandman is almost in, in an anthology series, which yeah. could lend itself, you know, well to like a um a TV show. But then you know, I think about contracts and stuff and shit like that. Like who's whoever plays Stan, Sandman is going to be the star, right? But how's he going to feel if he's not in half of a season because they're at the um, sex convention? <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> what about the, the stories where he has... The, uh, the uh, serial killer convention. I'm sorry. I'm, sex sex crime is always already fucking me up. The serial killer convention. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. that whole story. Or what about the episodes where he has to be a black guy? Right. Or the episodes where he has to be a cat? <laughs> or the episodes, if you read Overture, where he has to be a flower. Oh, he... Like, <laughs> like you're right. Like, I don't know how someone would respond to being the star of a series where they don't really show up. Yeah, yeah. I, mm, I, I don't know. I, I like, like, my only faith is there's, there's Netflix. And Netflix does usually a pretty good job with things, you know what I'm saying, just in general. And the fact that it's on Netflix, that means you can go, you can go R. You don't have to like compromise too much. Yeah. So, yeah. so that might be a good thing that since it's on Netflix, it doesn't have to be compromised at all. It so, can also, it can also be like uh, Netflix episodes aren't all the same length. Right. So they could do short anthology standalone episodes you know they could do the night of the cats episode and that could actually be like a cartoon and it could just be 10 minutes long right um so and then they could go back to the main story you know with an hour-long episode right after that um yeah i'll be i'll be really interested to see how they solve all these problems. Um, I, I'm just surprised that somebody looks at this and sees all those problems they have to solve and goes, yes, this is clearly a project I want to undertake. That sounds super overwhelming. Well, you know, this series is at least a year and a half to two years away. I just want to let you know when it does come out, we are definitely reviewing the whole first season. I just, so just put that in your calendar somewhere. Okay. Somewhere in the future that we'll be reviewing that whole season whenever it comes out. Got it. Okay, Amanda, I guess... Okay. Um, parental advisory. If you listen to the show with your kids, why? But if you do, and you don't necessarily mind the cursing, 
but maybe you'll mind like risque, I don't know, sex talk. You might not want to listen to this with your kids. If you um if you're faint of heart, you might not want to listen to this episode. But I'm assuming you, you listen you right, like like so like I'm assuming everybody who listened to this read this before they, they, they came to this podcast. But I would just like to give a warning. <laughs> Cause shit's about to go down. And I would like to give the other type of parental warning, which is the, if you know me in real life and uh, don't want to hear me talk about sex um, because we're coworkers or something, don't listen to this episode. Because <laughs> it's, it's about to get freaky up in here. <laughs> oh, God. That, that was funny to me. All right. Today, we are talking sex criminals. <laughs> Written by Matt Fraction and drawn by Chip Zardowski. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> you know what? It says just art by him. I'm, I've read Chip's stuff. I'm pretty sure he had a hand in some of this writing, by the way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's a few specific things where I was like, wow. Wow, I'm like you just couldn't stop him, could you? No, no. <laughs> he just threw the pages and sent them back, and you were left with what he'd done. <laughs> <laughs> with words, like it probably had word bubbles and everything. Like, hey, like, I didn't write this. Like, yeah, I know, right? It's, anyway, um, well, Chip did the lettering too. He did. See, see, see. He had look. Fresh and gave that man way too much power. <laughs> I I think that was a great thing, though. Yeah, because... I do too. <laughs> He was not really in comic books before right. Sex Criminals, and now he's he's gotten to do, I think he's gotten to do a little bit of, like, Daredevil and Spider-Man yes, stuff. Yes, yes, and, and that stuff is actually pretty good. Yeah, so, you know, if it, if it took this book to get him into comic books so that we could have, so that we could have him on other projects, it was totally worth it. Okay, so let's... Okay, let's back up a little bit. And so we discussed that screen posed by Image. It is a comedy crime risque. That's the genre that that is in. As I look at this, um, it 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 started um, September of 2013 and ended June 2018. It won the 2014 Eisner Award for Best New Series. The synopsis is Susie is just a regular gal with an irregular gift. When she has sex, she stops time. One day she meets John, and it turns out he has the same ability. And sooner or later, they get around to using their gifts to do what we'll all do. Rob a couple of banks. So, Amanda. Oh, and by the way, we are reading the first ten issues. Amanda. Yeah. What did you think of Sex Criminals? Uh... So it's funny because I was working in a comic book store when this book came out originally. And so I read the first few issues as they were coming out, like while I was in the store working Um, and had like literally like I thought it was really good. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was really well done, but I had no desire to like actually buy any of the issues or add it to my pull list. Right. Um, and yeah, I just, it was one of those, and I I feel like my opinion hasn't changed that much. Mm. I, it is technically like really, really, really well done. They do a lot of really interesting storytelling stuff. It's quality, everything, quality art, quality story, but, um, it's still somehow like, It's just like the, the the plot maybe just doesn't grab me or maybe the characters are too realistic. Mm. Another another aspect of this book that I found most compelling, like most impressive, is that a lot of the humor in this book is like the sort of humor you might have with like really, really close friends. Right. And when you read this book, you get the feeling like, like you're close friends with the creators. 
Like you feel like you're in, like you're in their clique, like you're getting all their inside jokes. Mm -hmm. And it's like a really interesting kind of like story, like emotional intimacy to feel like you're like in, in their group. Um, but it also means they just feel like real people okay. and it just feels like hanging out with your friends. And I think that if I'm choosing to read something to escape from real life, I want it to not be like real life. <laughs> <laughs> like you, like you may think that it would be really, you know, you may think that it would be like really cool to read someone's diary. Right. But then, like, you actually get their diary and it's like, oh, I went to the grocery store and somebody was, uh, you know, mean to me while I was waiting in line next day. Oh, I was driving to work and I cut this lady off and I kind of felt bad about it. And then I had like a shitty day. And like, you know, like it's people are actually kind of boring. <laughs> um, okay. So I don't, I don't know. What was your what was your overall impression? Amanda, I read this whole series in four days. I read all five volumes in four days. And after reading this whole series, I can honestly say I have no idea what to think. <laughs> I don't. Because, okay, I almost, I almost want to put this in, like, this on white folk, this on white folk shit category. But I'm not. Because I, cause I don't think that's fair to the book. But, like, a lot of swaps with this is just, like... This is like some real white folk shit. <laughs> it maybe maybe that's what I was trying to say is that like the level of problems that they're facing are like too real, too boring, too. But that, this actually, like, like look, look, look. I'm 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 halfway joking about the white folk shit, but like, look, I'm not a prude. Okay, I'm not. But I don't know. This book, right? I mean, I don't even know what the damn say. Just like I liked it enough to finish it, right? I, I clearly liked it because I finished it. But I don't know if I could recommend this to people because I don't know if everybody would enjoy it. Yeah. Does Does that make sense? Like. Then like yeah, well, then, then like some of the sexual politics. Maybe you're right. Maybe subconsciously this shit just too real, and and like I don't want to deal with that. With <laughs> deal with any sexual angles that I might have. <laughs> well, I I think um I think specifically the part I was thinking about that was too real was like the uh the 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 subplots of um John going to the therapist, right. Where I'm like, okay, like, that's a little too close to home. Like, I, I don't actually want to read a comic about people processing their their personal demons. Like, 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 like this is the thing, right? It started off as a fun, like, sex comedy. Then it started getting to, like, depression and, like, like you know, ADHD. And I'm like, there's a lot going on here besides just sex. And, like, maybe, yeah. like... And maybe that's our fault. Maybe like our expectations were, were for something else, you know, than what we got. But uh, I say this: I may not agree with necessarily one hundred percent of the sexual politics in this book, but I do like that it sets positive, and it tries to talk about sex sometimes in in a very adult way, and how couples deal with like sex. I. I really like the part where, like, you know, they say, oh, newness is worn off. Like, you know, after three weeks, the newness is worn off. We have settled into a routine. Yes. Because, you know, like, oh, God. See, now, now look, something tell, I feel like we better <laughs> start talking about personal shit. But, like, that's how it is. And, like, it's cool. It's kind of cool to see that, but at the same time, like you said, it's kind of mundane. Like, nobody want to think about, like, nobody want to think about when, you don't want to be reminded, not necessarily not reminded, but you don't want to think about when you first get with somebody how hot and heavy y'all are to fast forward you married and you got like a um, <laughs> schedule for sex. Not saying they have a schedule for sex, but like just that idea of just selling in, right? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like, I, I don't know. 
I, I no, mean, it's it's. I mean, like that's the. Um, I mean, like that is like the overall feeling I got was I was like, oh, like they they snuck a real story into a like shiny, sexy package. Um, and the shiny, sexy package was like funny for a little while. And then after that, when you're left with only like the underlying story, I was like, mm, this underlying story isn't something I would have read without the package. The package, you say? The package, yeah, the package. The package. Um, the glowing package? The glowing package. Yep. See, see, this see, this is going, oh man, this is going. Okay, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you the thing I hated the most about this okay. um, book. And it's something small. And again, I think this might be a white people thing because I've seen something like this before in like other things. But like when the friend calls the police because she's worried that, you know, her, you know, that that uh, Susie may be robbing banks with her boyfriend and she calls the police to help Susie. That really upset me on like a deep level because you don't fucking call the police. Like, that ain't how I was raised. So for her, like, like, like that was really that was really weird to me too. Oh, and that was I, that was. But, but like I've seen shit like this before. Like 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 you know what I'm saying? Like where I'm from, you don't do nothing like that. Like that is strange, and like that feels like a betrayal. But they play it like they but they play it off like it's no big deal. And they still friends. No, no, bitch, you caught the police on me. <laughs> you you, yeah. you read me out. What? Yeah, I I can't I can't imagine being friends with somebody after they did that, especially since what we know of her alleged friend is that she's just kind of like a horrible, manipulative, slutty in a non-judgmental way. Um, I yeah, I I felt like that character was not really a good friend for her and. My one of my biggest hopes, if I'd kept reading past the second volume, would have been for her to like not be friends with that woman anymore. Uh, well, I'm not gonna tell you what happened, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I also wanted to throw out just um, and we joked about this a little bit, and I I joked about it a little bit on Twitter that the whole like library subplot was. First of all, it was a little bit 80s movie, like, oh, hey, guys, like, we have to get together to save the community center. Yeah. For the kids, um, which is fine. Uh, but one of the things that bothered me about it a little bit was if you think about, like, okay, if the bank is going to foreclose on a property that's being either mortgaged or leased by the municipal government... That means that, like, that town is in shambles. Like, that means they have, like, no money for anything. It means that, like, or it means that they have, like, rampant dysfunction and corruption in their government. Because, like, they weren't just closing down and consolidating that branch of the library. They were literally just going to, like, knock the building over with the books still inside it. It, again... I had questions about that too, but I was, distro I, I was so distracted by the word come world that, right. um, that like, I didn't even give it like, I look, you know, I'm better at rolling. I'm, I'm like a lot better at rolling with things and that seemed weird, but I was just like, it's a come book, I guess. But like, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like part, like libraries are like parts in cities. You know what I'm saying? They don't really serve like an actual purpose. But it, it, but it's supposed to make your city better in some way because it's culture. You get what I'm trying to say? I mean, I mean, they're important and they do serve a purpose. Yeah. But I mean, you, you know, a, I, a, a, a city would shut down a library and like consolidate resources and like like it would do stuff like it would close the branch five days a week or something and leave it open on the weekends before it would just literally allow the building to be demolished. Not to mention. If the person who owns the property that they're mortgaging it from wants to demolish the thing, that's like six months of getting permits, right? Right. Well, like, so I was just, I was just a little bit like, like the library subplot 
would still be compelling if it had been done realistically. It didn't need to be like a cartoon villain style thing. Well, Amanda, to be fair to this comic, yeah, it does have glowing dits and vaginas in it. Yes. Yes, it, I am perhaps focusing on the wrong supernatural detail. <laughs> I like how I like how like the two things we, we dislike about this book has nothing to do with any of the sets. It's almost like we try not to talk about all the sets that's in this book because there's a lot of sets in this book. And is there though? <laughs> is there? Is there though? There is a lot of talk about sex. There is a lot of like the characters drawn on top of each other and then we get like time freezing but there isn't like actually that much sex in it say there's not much you, you know what it's not much graphic sex I, i'll say that yeah but um so you know what let's let, let's start here what do you think of these characters what do you think of Susie, particularly um i don't know she seems kind of boring really yeah. <laughs> what about Jen? He also seems pretty boring. Wow. And also a little bit frustrating of like a person to try to talk to. Well, he does have his brain stuff as he likes to call it. Yes. So that I, sounds I, like it would be it that sounds like it would get really old really fast to deal with. I mean like the, like the, you don't want to elaborate or anything like <laughs> Um well, I mean here's the thing is like like what do I like? What do we actually know about Susie? She lost her dad, and her mom's a drunk, or was. Yeah. And she okay. Ma- and she masturbated she... one time, and she realized she could freeze time. Right. And then, also, she works at a library, which I guess means she's like a good person and she's nice. Right. Um, and maybe a little bit of a nerd. Uh. We know that she's friends with a really... She has a really horrible taste in friends. Um, we're toxic, but... Um, I don't think she's really toxic. It just... I, I don't know. It, again, it just may be... Look, she might be a great friend, but it was just that part. It just... It we just, don't have any scenes where she really... Like, there's a scene where... Susie meets her for coffee and they kind of like apologize to each other. Right. But otherwise there's no evidence that this person actually makes Susie's life better in any way. Right. So should we talk about like what, like what is it that this book is about? It's about these two people who, who realize they have like the power to like, you know, stop these time. two super boring people where the only interesting thing about them is that when they have sex, they or not when they have sex, Specifically, when they orgasm, they stop time. You know what? I think you're being harsh on these. On 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 them. I don't think they're that boring. I th- <laughs> I think I think that the book is so busy being about them doing the sex that we don't see them do much of anything else. I think so. They- <laughs> I don't really feel like I know who they are as people, except I know that they're people who do the sex. That, you know, Amanda, come on. We go into John Hole backstory, like why, or why he like taking dumps, and why he off his meds and all that. I think they are well developed characters. I mean, look, look to to a certain extent, I kind of agree with you. Like you know, what I'm saying, I, I, I'm not completely against what you're saying. I do kind of agree with you a little bit, but I, I think you know, I, I think they are more fleshed out, especially John. John is definitely like probably the most fleshed out character here. Like, in a way, even though it's technically Susie's story, so that's kind of weird that I think he's the most, like, you know what I'm saying, well-rounded of all the characters in this book. Yeah. You know. So, so yeah. Um, they go to this place called Come World, or The Quiet. See, another thing about this book, right? Mm-hmm. I've never... And, like, it dips into this... I've never really been a fan of the sex comedy. Like, I watch them. They're okay, right? But I've never been like a Porky's, Revenge of the Nerd, American mm-hmm. Pie type guy. Yeah. And I think some of the comedy dips into that type of, dips into that kind of territory. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
you know, it, it almost too is it. It's almost too juvenile for me, or I feel like it's too juvenile. But then, you know, they'll turn around and have these very frank discussions about their relationship and sex. So I want to call it juvenile per se, because like there are some, like some grown up parts in here, but just like some of the comedy in here, I'm not like really fond of. Again, like him calling it cum world, like that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like that's really interesting to bring up because I feel like the especially juvenile parts are his flashbacks. Mm. So like, you know, come world is what he called it when he was like 13. Like the, like that, like all of that came from the time in his life where the juvenile sex comedy was like his reality. Right. And. <laughs> And him being sort of, I mean, like, that's sort of his problem is that he's a little immature. He's a little, he's, like, woken up and realized that he's already an adult and he forgot to, like, finish growing up. Um, so I feel like that maybe suits his character, but that doesn't mean that, like, an adult who reads it is going to appreciate that just because it's true to the character that he is. <laughs> I like how he named all the people he had sex with. Then it's just a scene of uh, all of them in the room with. Yeah, that's a really interesting, just like storytelling element that they use in a lot of ways is that when they're doing these flashbacks, they themselves as, as adults are drawn into the scene. Right. And they use that a lot. Like if they talk about somebody Chip would actually draw that person in the scene as though they were there and they could talk to you and they can look right out the panels and be like, hey, I'm telling you the reader information right now. I'm not, you know, this obviously didn't happen in the flashback. Um, I think that they use that really, really well. Yeah, I, t there's a lot of fourth wall breaking in this book. And I'm going to tell you, Amanda, um, as someone that read for it, it gets even crazier with the fourth wall breaking. Mm. Like, so, like, I, again, it's fine, but I don't know. Maybe it would work better as a more traditional. Look, you know how you said, like, like, te like, technically this book is good, but it doesn't connect with you, right? Yeah. I think it's suffering for something I like to call indie book-itis. Uh-huh. You know, like, and I hate to say that, and I hate to say it as a pejorative, right? But, you know, we, we've talked about this, like, when, when we discuss on what we're going to read, and we look through, like, oh, you want to read this, you want to read that? I'm like, that sounds interesting, but it also sounds like an indie book. Yeah. And this, this is like an indie book to its heart, because it's, like, super graphic, you know what I'm saying? But also, like, super duper experimental. You know, yes. you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, it's coloring outside the lines. So I, I just like to call that, like, like it has indie book syndrome. You know what I'm saying? It's about regular people in slightly extor extor extraordinary um, situations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it does have the, um, I think I went to small press expo once and walked down an aisle, and every single book in that aisle was a semi-autobiographical magical realist slice of life weird cute little story exactly um exactly so it does it does have a little bit of that undercurrent um where it just it's my response to that sometimes is i want to you know look at the person showing me their book and go how dare you think that you're enough for me <laughs> like <laughs> like you're like you're a real person and I want to respect you and like, you know, not be dismissive of your existence in the universe. But like, how dare you think that your life alone is interesting enough for me to care about? Um, oh. Hi, I'm a horrible person. Um, <laughs> I, I've never actually said that out loud to anyone, but I have definitely given them like the look, you know, reading this book had me thinking about a lot of things that I've done <laughs> in the past as far yeah. as my sex life. And like, you know, I know you've been hard on this book, but like, I kind of wish that, you know, 
when I was doing all these crazy sex things when I was younger, that I, I, I could have found a woman that I could talk to like the way John and Susie talk. Because I think that shit is super healthy. That is another thought I had, which was that reading this book only from, you know, like I'm in a really healthy relationship like I'm married and my husband's like my best friend and he's yeah. awesome like I I'm almost 10 years out from being single and like having super weird sex hang-ups so it I may be you, I thought you about to say having super weird sex <laughs> no no I'm sorry um, I would say I'm about to say whoa but yes, yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe that. So, so it may just be that I'm like, like I'm reading this book, and I'm almost like, like it's not for me. You see, I don't think. Huh. Okay, so man, this is what I think, right? Now, look, we know each other, right? But we mm-hmm. don't know each other. We don't know each other super personally, right? But I believe me and you are kind of like on the same wavelength that, like, we're not conservative per se, but we kind, yeah. but we kind of conservative still. And we kind of, and we say they boring, but we kind of boring people ourselves and we're kind of practical. So when we see these crazy white people doing crazy white people shit, we just kind of like, we both just kind of roll our eyes. Yeah. If that make any sense, like. Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) Like, like, like part of, part of reading this book is maybe just like contact embarrassment because I'm like, yeah, I totally would have written this book too. (laughs) And I'm like, it's not really a great idea. I, I, I give you an example of just like how like as you get older your view your, your viewpoint changes right. This is mm-hmm. this is a quick aside. Me and my wife sit there and watch Spider Man two, and I will tell you, you know Spider Man two is my favorite is my favorite Spider Man movie. I cried doing Spider Man two. Like like Spider Man two is great. It's the best Spider Man movie. So I watch Spider Man two with my wife right, and don't you know I get angry by halfway through this through the damn movie. Okay. Because you know why. Peter Parker can't get his shit together. And it was really frustrating me. Yeah. Like, like it would really make... I know what they was going for. Like, oh, I was like, you know what, bro? I was like, you know what, bro? You cannot stop a crime or two to finish your homework. You cannot stop a crime or two to, like, do your job. You cannot... You, you can stop a crime or two and, like, tell Mary Jane you love her and you want to be with her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have... It doesn't have to be this thing where, like, you know, you you about to get kicked out. You about to get kicked out your apartment. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all this shit is just, like... Like, this, almost, I like, this is almost... Then, like, you know, do you remember in that movie, Aunt May actually loses the house? Um, I don't think I remembered that, but... She loses yeah. the house. And you know, I'm thinking to myself, your best friend is the richest fucker in the in, in, on the in the fucking city. He yeah. loves he loves your aunt May like like his own mother because he had no mother. You can ask your homeboy for a loan. <laughs> you can ask your best friend in the whole wide world who 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 you are super close with, and your aunt and, and your aunt is super close with. Like, hey, aunt May gonna lose her house, pal. Could you, like, you know, help us out? You can ask him, like, hey, look, I'm showing my rent. Could you, like, what I'm saying is there's resources. Like, there's things he could have did. With yeah. This, this shit. And, like, this is something I didn't know this when I was, like, 18 watching this movie. But as a grown man with a kid and shit and responsibilities, I'm like, dude, get your shit together. It's nobody's fault but your own. But the sirens, fuck them sirens. Yeah. <laughs> What you gonna it's, do if you ain't? It's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit. Uh, rewatching Home Alone is the same way. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Everybody... That is a that is a horror movie. I'm just thinking about the property damage, like oh, how no. much. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I'm like, like it's the same thing. Like once you, like once you're the person who's in charge of like fixing stuff. <laughs> Home Alone is a horror movie because it's just like, oh my gosh, like, like he pulled like the trim off the door and there's like broken windows and there's like flooding and there's like stuff burning. And it's just like, Oh my gosh, it's going to cost thousands of dollars to fix the house after all of the shenanigans. He pulled. Well, my problem with home alone, as I've seen it is like how, how terrible everybody is. Yeah. 
<laughs> including, yeah. including Kevin. Like, yeah. like, like, like the way he talks to his mother. Yeah. I like I got mad. Yeah. And, and I don't spank my We're child. We're too old for this shit. Look, look, I don't spank my child. I have never spanked my child. But 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 if my son would have said to me what he said to his mama, I'd throw his ass out of the window. Or at a minimum, leave him at home while you go on vacation without him. Uh, yeah, I leave his little punk ass. But that's the thing, though. But his family ain't no better. How you gonna? How you gonna let? How you gonna let you know your brother talk to your son like that? I don't give a damn what he did. You don't let your, you, you don't let your brother, you don't let that boy uncle talk to him like that. Well, he call him a little ass. He call him something terrible. You know, it's just like like yeah. all these people are terrible. Like, who am I supposed to root for? I think I'm root. I think I'm rooting for um, Joe Pesci and Daniel <laughs> Stern. <laughs> Cause fuck all these people. No, we don't completely go off the damn book. Look, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was that was my fault. That was just, take a drink for every time we we leave subject. So, um, yeah. So eventually they decide to rob banks to save to save the library. Yeah. And they come in contact with the sets police. What do you think of the set po- sets police, Amanda? Um, Particularly Kevin Face. I maybe just haven't gotten far enough in the series to understand what the hell they're supposed to be. It seems like they were concerned that other people with the ability to stop time when they orgasm might somehow let the rest of the world know. Right. And that then something. I don't know what they thought the consequences of that were going to they be. They were gonna get experimented on. Basically. Okay, but like like how were they gonna like I, I guess that's what I don't understand is like if some if some dude in California gets found out, like how are they gonna know to come find me? Well, well. To be fair, they do have a tracking system, so I guess that, they're scared that, that somebody else might develop that technology. This, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just, I was like, it, it doesn't. I don't know. I, I wasn't. I wasn't quite clear of their motivations, um, and also not quite clear of like like this is one of those frustrating romantic comedy things where it was like like I don't know why they were really on opposite sides. Right. But it is funny when John get his little deal though. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Can can we all agree that it's hilarious? Yes, that, he... that was hilarious. That was okay. hilarious. And that they that they like disarmed Kegel face using the vibra the gun vibrator. <laughs> um because that I mean I guess that's a, a mechanic that we haven't brought up yet, which is that um you only you orgasm and time stops until you leave the refractory period and you're ready to have sex again. Right. So that means that the vibrator gun uh, actually turned Kegel face on, and she fell out of the uh, the quiet place, and they were able to get away. Yo, there's a lot to unpack in that. Um, since you just said, yeah, about vibrating gun turning her on, like I think she needs to see a therapist. <laughs> I mean, everybody in that book needs to see a therapist. Yeah, but uh, yes, the fact that like yes, I, I thought that was fucking hilarious. Also, the fact that like. And again, help me out with this. Because <laughs> I'm black, okay? <laughs> why do you... Stop laughing at me. <laughs> Look, why is it that, like, white dudes are obsessed with dildos? Not necessarily sexually, but just, like, weirdly in general? I don't know. I think they think it's funny. Because where I'm from... Uh huh. I keep saying this like where I'm from, and I know where I'm from is not everywhere. Like you just can't, you just can't be playing with dildos like that, man. Thinking like nobody, people gonna look at you weird. <laughs> yeah, I 
I think it's just like a, I think it's a certain type of guy realizes that the idea of dildos makes other people uncomfortable and then just like goes way overboard with it. Like in her little sex dungeon, didn't she have like a throne made out of dildos? Yes. Like that's hilarious. Because yeah. it makes some people uncomfortable. Did it make you uncomfortable, Amanda? No, I found that kind of hilarious because it's like, why would you do that? That's stupid. <laughs> I mean, look, and that's another thing too. Like, look, I understand love and sex, right? But there's, um, man, like, I, I know, I know someone who really loved dick. But like the dick worship in this comic is kind of it's kind of off putting, which is weird for me to say because I'm a dude, right? Like you know what I'm saying. The the, the, the the first thing I want a woman to do, but it's just like man, like you only need one, maybe two. <laughs> you don't need a whole throne. Like what type of freaky shit are you people into? Like I said, I think it's just like a when you find out that some people are like you know, skeeved out about it or whatever, you um you just go all in. Do, do we just sound like do we just like the, the like a complete do we sound like a couple of squares for like find something to shit the set shit in here like weird? I mean well that's the thing is like it didn't really seem that weird to me. It did? It well, didn't. It's it all it like I said, it all sounded like that level of joking you do with people you're really close friends with. Right, right. Like, yeah, so, like, me, and maybe that's me interpreting them as, like, not being really super earnest about a lot of the sex jokes. Mm, okay, I get that. And and so you're, so you're sitting there and you're like, why does she have a throne made out of dildos that doesn't make any sense? And I'm like, clearly she's doing it because she thinks it's funny. And it never occurred to me that, like, maybe she actually wants a dildo throne. I mean, I yeah, mean, I mean, if you want that many dicks, you can just go to a sex club. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If right. But you can't like, I don't know. I just I think the the conceit of making furniture out of something that's like so useless otherwise. I don't know. <laughs> like like trying to give something that clearly has only one purpose like other uses. I, I this book kind of reminds me of the last one we just read. In that so the last book we just read was uh Raina Telgemeier's Smile. A coming of age story. This is also coming to age stories. Emphasis on the coming. Ayo, <laughs> okay. My, I've been working um, on that joke for a whole week. Go ahead. Um, but the real value in both of these books is the conversation that you have around them, right. and not really like like the actual book. The actual story is just kind of like a launching point for thinking more about the ideas it presents. Um, right. Yeah, so, like, the work you do after reading the book is way more valuable and way more important than what was actually on the pages. Uh, uh, look, so, um, another thing about these books that I realize is they don't end right. Like, they all end up, I like, I wonder if that's why I finished it, because every, because every volume ended on a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. So, so, like, I had to see how it ended. Right. And honestly... The whole series kind of ends on a cliffhanger, which is really weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is the final, but we don't resolve everything. And I'm just like, ah. But what? And so, okay, so so we're talking about this. So, what do you think about the fact that when um, Jasmine sent cocaine, because I'm called by her porn star name, her, her powers differ than theirs, in that she's like becomes like a spirit. I I mean, like that was the cliffhanger. Of the second volume, so I didn't really think much of it. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying, like, like now they, it, it, it's well, the, it it's sort of it sort of um is like Chew, where it now opens up the possibility of lots of different kinds of orgasm superpowers, right? Um, which kind of like makes the sandbox they're playing in a little bit bigger, mm. um, and a little it could be a little more interesting, knowing that like. This isn't the only power that people could have. Right. So, 
I'm just looking through here to see if there's anything. Also, she she took umbrage with them being criminals. And again, I don't get it. Like she she kicked them straight out. Oh, you are criminals. Get out. I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> that. Like I, I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Like And like I would not be associated with this. And I'm just like, I guess morally that's cool, but like it it just it doesn't seem like how a human would act. I don't know. Yeah. What about uh, you? What about you, Amanda? If, if if a couple came to you with their time stopping sex powers and they told you they robbed a couple of banks, but they need your help to stop a crazy uh, sex police worker, would you, would you would you tell them to get out because they wrote, robbed a couple of banks? Um, I mean, here's the thing: if I also had the time stopping sex power, I would just be so blown away by like meeting other people with the power that I would probably at least hang out with them for a while. And figure out, like, what kind of bank robbers they were, you know? Right, right. But, like, if I like if, if it was just, like, actually Amanda, I would be like, you guys are crazy. I can't help you. Like, do you need a ride somewhere? Like, like but she, you she, want to stop at McDonald's on the way to the hospital? I'll help you guys out. <laughs> but she took umbrage. That, that, that was the weird yeah. thing. Like, she took umbrage with them being, like, bank robbers. Yeah, I, like, I don't think it's that serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is serious because because you because you, you commit grand larceny, but eh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I grew up around too many criminals, but uh, <laughs> like it don't seem that bad. There, there were just a couple of banks. Yeah. So Amanda, um, would you recommend this book to anybody? Um. Yeah, actually, I I would recommend it. Um, really, at all the shit you just talked. Yeah, no, I just I just recognize like, uh, like it's I feel like it's on me that I didn't really connect with the characters and that I'm in a point in my life where like I didn't want to really read a sex comedy. I don't know, um, but I still think it's like a really well-made book and it's really funny. And I feel like if somebody reads like the first few issues and likes it, I would be like, yeah, absolutely. Keep reading it. Um, but that's what I would recommend is I would recommend everybody check out the first few issues. Would you recommend this for a 12 year old? No, (laughs) I would recommend it for like, where it says 17 plus on here. So they let you know up front. (laughs) Uh, I don't know, 17, I was going to say maybe like, like halfway through high school. By the time you're 15, you're a pretty filthy fucking person in your mind. Well, I just, I just feel like because it does address like, like coming of age type issues. Like, I feel like it might be useful for younger people to read. Right. Um, I don't know. I wanted to, um. I wanted to bring up one more aspect of this book. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that like Chip's art is really, really great. It is. Um, he, uh, he actually used. Real- um, I feel like I can tell like it, it works out really well. Um, um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was that um, Chip actually um was nominated for a Harvey Award. Okay. Uh, and won. And rejected the award because it wasn't with Matt. So it was an award for only him. And uh, he rejected it because it wasn't for the entire creative team. Wow, really? In the in this in the spirit of like, hey, like author writers alone get nominated for stuff all the time. Like I'm not going to accept the award for something that I only did half of. Um, which is kind of funny because it's almost always like the writer who gets nominated without the artist. Right. And I'm trying to remember when this was, but it was like they nominated him as the artist. And he, so, so I remember at the time being like, wait, is this satire? Like, was he like making some sort of joke about like, oh, well, like as the artist, I can't accept the award without the writer. Um, But like, yeah, like that really happened. Like he's a, he's a stand up guy. Uh, 
So in addition to doing all of this work and just being like, I mean, like you can, you could spend an entire day going down the internet hole of like weird stuff that Chip Zardsky has done. Oh, uh, I know. Oh, I know. I, I know Chip will. <laughs> but just like, like in the middle of all of that, there's like multiple, multiple, like really cool things he's done. Um, I think, I think that, like I, I said a little earlier, maybe the most important thing this book did was bring Chip Zardsky into comics. Right, because he as a, a as a major player, he is a national treasure, and I won't, <laughs> and I won't hear. I mean, he he's Canadian. I would I, I would I would go to war with Canada to get him. I know, right? I mean, he's Canadian, <laughs> but nobody is perfect. Yeah, but, but he is a national treasure, and I think he should be um, <laughs> celebrated as such. So, uh, as far as me, I would definitely recommend this book. I think um, it's super sets positive. I think it talks, despite some of our complaints about how juvenile it can be, I think it talks about sets in a really adult way a lot of the times. Like, you know, get through maybe some of the issues that they might have, like with sets or like hangups. And it's also like, you know, it shows that, you know, whatever... Outside of having sex with kids, whatever like weird sexual thing you have, it's not a crime. It's okay. You don't have to feel ashamed for it, cause everybody got their thing. Unless your thing is robbing banks, that's unless a crime. Your, unless your thing is robbing banks, you know some 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 people like gotta it. draw the line somewhere. Some, Dildo thrown, fine. Banks absolutely out. Some people like to be tied up. And and some people like white women. It just all is all <laughs> what you're into. You know what I'm saying? I think we're done. I I still think we're done. Um, Amanda, what are we reading next week? Um, well, I I looked at my list of comics that I've read, and I saw that there was a uh, a gaping void that needed to be satisfied somehow. So I was hoping we could just plug some old fashioned Superman right in my comic hole. <laughs> Give me, Give me. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so next week for our anniversary show. That's right, we have been doing this one year. 52 weeks. 52 weeks. We have we have made it. So we thought it would be a good idea if we're going to do our anniversary um, show, we should do it on the first superhero ever. The greatest superhero, if you ask me. Not my favorite, but the greatest. So we are doing Jones Byrne's seminal Man of Steel, where, 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 where he reintroduced the character for a modern age. Of 1984. If they want to reach us for how immature we are, especially you, where can they? Uh, You could send an email to comicbookclub69 at gmail.com. That's Uh, that's not really. uh, Are you done? I'm done. Do you have any more in you? I, no. I just, I just, I'm done now. Can't you look, look, look now? This is a really personal question. Did this book make you horny at all? Did, 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 no. <laughs> okay, good. Me either. <laughs> well, and that's that's kind of what I was getting at before. Was it was like for a book that has so much sex in it, it was like not actually sexy. It, it was. It, it wasn't sensationalized enough. It was just not like it was very like matter of fact. Right. It wasn't like meant to be arousing. It was meant to be like. Sex is a thing. So, so is that good or bad in this case? The, the in your personal opinion. No, we, um, we just talking about the book again. But yeah, in, in your opinion, I think that's good because, like, there's plenty of porn out there already. Uh, I worked in a comic book store. I'm familiar with the shelves in the store that are gross. Um, you can find dirty sex comics if you want. So, did, did any women ever buy any of those? Because I like I know dudes do, but I'm always I'm always curious about the women. Um, women were more likely to buy weird manga. 
which I'm sure had like weird sex stuff in it. But tentacles, men were the ones... tentacles. No, go ahead. Maybe I don't know. But men were more likely to buy like the Xenoscope, whatever. See, so you no, know we'll, we'll 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 workshop that later. Yeah. Okay. Again, Amanda, if they want to reach us, where can they reach us? Comic Book Club Fifty Two okay. on Twitter. I'm Jamil Payne. I'm Amanda Comey. And we are out. Ha <laughs> ha